these rivers can often be treated as little more than sewers, but a campaign online to clean up the country's water has been gathering steam. For more, here's our contributor in Beijing, Mark Dreyer. It's no exaggeration to say that China's water situation is getting desperate. The groundwater of 90% of Chinese cities is polluted, with more than 60% considered severely polluted. Two years ago, the government laid out plans to make all groundwater safe to drink by 2020 at a staggering cost of $850 billion. But even so, the future does not look promising. What makes the problem even worse is that it's very difficult to rid drinking water of the heavy metals that contaminate it using traditional waste treatment methods. In addition, rapid urbanization and industrialization has created an enormous thirst for water in China's cities. But water diversion projects have wreaked havoc on the environment. It's widely agreed that no more than 30% of a river should be drawn off to avoid serious ecological consequences. But northern China is now full of dry riverbeds, and many areas across China face similar problems. It's led many to lament the situation online. This post is typical on the microblogs and forums and blames the system, suggesting that if the government actually followed the Chinese constitution as it's laid out, then these environmental problems would not exist in the first place. Activist Deng Fei, who has close to 3 million followers on Sina Weibo, recently launched a campaign that has since gone viral when he asked on his microblog, How is the river in your hometown? While you're at home for the holidays, take a photo of the river or stream in your hometown and upload it to Weibo for us to see. The question was forwarded by many people and the response was striking. Countless pictures of polluted waterways were uploaded to the web, including this shot from the official Changsha Evening News microblog account, showing raw sewage spewing straight into a local river. Deng Fei's campaign inspired similar posts and the message was impossible to ignore. As you might expect, there have been plenty of scathing comments. This person complains, the government regulator's dereliction of duty coupled with shameless and irresponsible companies has destroyed the rivers in our hometowns. The campaign gained so much publicity that even Jack Ma, chairman of the Alibaba Group and one of China's most famous businessmen, felt compelled to comment, saying, Three main cancers will worry every family in a decade's time. Liver cancer because of the water, lung cancer because of the air, and stomach cancer because of our food. All our hard-earned money will go towards medical bills. One local entrepreneur named Jin Jungmin posted about a river in his hometown that used to be clean enough to wash in, but is now badly polluted. Jin offered a local official $30,000 to swim in the river for 20 minutes. Needless to say, the official has yet to take the bet. But the result is that not only have local governments across China been shamed into action, but the central government now knows that dirty water is as much a popular concern as polluted air and toxic food. For Linkasia, I'm Mark Dreyer in Beijing. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org. Okay, so uh, first question, Mr. Chu. Um, what do you find to be the biggest issue with uh, water pollution? That generally, as a society, we don't think it's a big deal. And it is sort of a big deal because we have a tendency to think, oh, I'm going to pollute the water and just going to flow downstream and I'm not going to have to worry about it again. You know what I mean? Okay. That's kind of typical. It's easy to say I'm going to pollute the water maybe knowingly or unknowingly and then it's going to go down to St. Louis and they'll have to deal with it. Or it's going to end up in New Orleans and they're going to have to deal with it. Or it's going to end up somewhere else. Or... It's not a problem in the United States, it's a problem in Mexico. And I hear that a lot. Oh, I see a lot of water pollution when I travel around the world, and we don't seem to have those problems. Well, we do, but it's a little bit more subtle. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an attitude. attitude. That's right. what I'm saying. All right. Um, I also understand you uh, clean stuff up from, like, the river. Yeah, we um, do. What are some things that you found? In the river? Yeah. Some of the most... Uh, bizarre? Let's say, yeah, bizarre. Tires? Easy. A lot of tires. Batteries from trucks and cars. That's stressful. Sofa? Microwaves. So can you see it now? 
Uh, the microwave doesn't work anymore. Hey, Herm, what do you want to do with the microwave? I'll take care of it, Madge. Don't worry about me. Unplugs it, puts it in the back of the pickup truck, drives down the river at night. Into the river. Yeah. Now, some of the waste we have found is probably, in, in all honesty, a product of the tornado spill. There's still a fair amount of junk out there from the tornado. I remember one time we ripped off, uh, we didn't rip off, we were pulling out like a big sheet of aluminum, and it looked like it was the side of a building, you know, like the side of a garage, and, you know, which probably got blown up into the trees and then dropped down in the river over time. So I'm sure some of it's still a product of the storm from 98, but uh, there are some things that are clearly not, you know. Uh, if you, and you won't, you don't know this, probably you don't remember, but across from McDonald's, after the storm, Alumacraft canoes were hung up in the trees. It's pretty wild. So you're driving down 169, and there are all these canoes hanging up in the trees. Mm, what are like the most common signs you see in like a river, like a flood or something? Just plastic. Just ge generally plastic. Water bottles are huge. You know, um, the squirt bottle from Fantastic or something, or something like that. In there. And just little shreds of waste. You know, you know when you get a bag of potato chips, you know, and you throw it in the garbage. Well, then the garbage goes out to the curb, but it's a windy day. So now the, 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 the garbage truck comes and picks up, up your big green bin and dumps it into the box, right? And in the process, while it's going back down, that little white bag kind of blows out of the truck and ends up going out in the street and then blows down to the river, and there we are. And that, what's that a function of? It's just a function of So waste management, the big green bin, you know, when they dump it into the truck, they'll find some of that stuff that's blown around. So then, um, what do you see being probably the biggest issue that could result in all of these emissions? Well, certainly in the land of 10,000 lakes, I'd like to think that we have some really nice water. I'm sure that we have some really nice water. I mean, I can go to the lake and get a big and I can get a short and I can walk But I would still, again, an attitude that we take it for granted. go to North Carolina right now and see a series of lakes that are colored in the same way. Some people are boating on it, some people are canoeing on it, some people are swimming on it. You and I would look at it and go, man, I'm not going out there. But to them, that's the best water they got. And look at what we've got compared to what they've got. I come home and I want to appreciate my lakes a lot more and I want to enjoy a lot more. So I want to take care of those environments a little bit more carefully. I mean, those are issues, it's that attitude again, where we don't appreciate what we have until we lose it. You know, and, and there, there, you know, there's a lot of different levels of the water discussion. There's the surface water discussion and rivers and runoff. There's the aquifer that we're using to put the water in this pipe. There's how much water do you use to take a shower or a bath at the end of the day. You know, each of us in this room right here uses about 100 gallons of water every day. Now, do I literally take 100 gallons of water out of the sink? No, but in the making of my food and in the making of my fuel, shower and I brush my teeth and I get a drink. Overall, collectively, about 100 gallons a day. Well, you start adding that up, where's that water coming from? It's coming from underground. And how did you get there? Very slowly. We have to be careful of our groundwater as well as our surface water. So this water issue is really complicated. And I don't know where you're centering your discussion on. Well, it's kind of like the general overall yeah and it's it's the absolute essence of life how long can you go without food if you prepared really well 10 to 14 days how long can you go without water you know, like four days two two think about that for a moment Are you thirsty right now yeah. I'm thirsty right now let's imagine I can't get a drink right now you were your own you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now I can't get a drink tonight, I can't get a drink in the morning, and I can't get a drink at this time tomorrow either. And now I got issues. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, no. That's good. Yeah, thank you for that. You okay?